Well, hello, this is Kelly and I am the Mathematic Plumber and welcome to video seven of the gas control series. Today we discuss the diaphragm gas valve and how it works. Now the pictures I'm using today come from the Porter and Chester Institute from Connecticut in Massachusetts. It is a very helpful picture and I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description below. So here's my diaphragm gas valve and it's cut away so we can kind of see what's going on here. I have my gas coming in and it goes inside the gas valve here. And we're gonna say that is at seven inches of water column of pressure. I'm gonna have some gas acting up on the bottom of the gas valve here, but it actually travels up through here over top of this valving mechanism and the diaphragm, which is made of synthetic rubber. So this is being held closed by this pressure over top of it. And I've got a special little, a small solenoid valve that's in here holding this bleeder port closed, allowing the gas to flow up through here. That's why that's happening. So I'm going to energize this little coil. My coil gets energized, which changes the position of this plunger. So notice that the plunger now blocks off this port where the gas was coming up through and it allows any gas that's above this to bleed off through the bleeder port. Now this goes up through a tube and is generally bled off right beside the pilot assembly and it'll actually give a little shot of flame when it happens. But now my gas is able to open up this diaphragm valve, flow past and go over to my burner somewhere. And of course, when the call for heat is satisfied, the electricity to this coil is let go. And we return to this position here, where this armature comes up, closes off the bleeder port, and gas flows above the diaphragm again, closing the valve. That is how it works. All right, let's talk about some potential issues. If my bleeder port gets totally blocked off somehow, what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna get a call for heat. This is gonna go to close down, but because this bleeder port is blocked, no gas can flow out of this chamber. So this valve would actually remain closed if the bleeder port was blocked off. All right, the next example involves this pressure port somehow getting blocked off. So what's gonna happen there is if I can't get any gas pressure from here going above the diaphragm, the gas valve will never close. So that would involve this part here being blocked up and it would look exactly like this, but I'm talking about a physical blockage from something that made it into the gas line. And that's our problem. All of a sudden we have gas flowing through here and it never stops. And all of a sudden you have a burner that's massively overheating either a boiler or the furnace system and it just won't stop. And the last example is we could either have the, the bleeder port here or the pressure port partially plugged. And that's gonna result in sluggish operation the gas valve is not gonna open and close uh, like it's supposed to. It might be a little bit jerky or it might open or close very slowly. And we finally made it to the end of this series, but of course there are way more gas controls than just the ones we've discussed here. I just discussed the ones I needed to. But thank you for joining me on this journey and you have yourself a great day.